Hey friends, this is Marilyn from tarotclarity.com and today's video may surprise you a little bit because I'm not featuring a historic Italian or French or Swiss deck. Um, I'm featuring two uh, decks uh, created under the collaboration of A.E. Waite and, and Pamela Coleman-Smith. Now, the reason I thought of them and, and thought of doing something of them is because in recent um, days, I did a a video about um, how tarot appears and is used in um, Nightmare Alley. And so for that video, I had to pull out my my AE weight deck because it's a crackle back and I just was keeping it in, you know, keeping with the, the film. And I was, you know, looking at it and I was thinking, oh, you know, I haven't really looked at it in a long time. So it was kind of nice to go through it. And... Um, when I had bought this A.E. Weight deck, um, I don't know, about five years ago, you know, maybe, yeah, about five years ago, maybe five or six years, um, I was thinking that I was buying a uh, very close to the source manifestation of, you know, the Weight Coleman Smith collaboration. Now, in 2016, I think, so it was 2016, so that's six years ago. So in 2016, when this when this deck came out, you know, U.S. Game Systems, Inc., and I guess whoever was creating this deck, um, I think they got into some kind of pissing contest about the, the, the copyrights and stuff like that. So it was very hard in the States to get a copy in English <laughs> at that time. Now it's, it's much, you could just get it easily on, on um, Amazon, but then you couldn't, you know, so I had to go to like, um, Amazon, um, I think Germany where, uh, yeah, obviously, yeah, uh, Germany, you know, to get a copy and, and the, and the German copy was the only one I can get my hands on. Now, from what I understand of this deck, it is, and I don't know about ABCDE stuff. I, I, you know, I can't keep track of that, I, but I just know that this deck um, originally came out in 1910, which was the year after the first, and um, it had a it had a crackle back, and they it was created um, a year after the original was because, I, from what I understand, it, it was felt that they could do a better job with with printing and color that kind of thing, so. That's why the 1910 deck was created. But before the 1910 deck, there was a 1909 deck, which has this, this particular back. And um, it's known as the Roses and Lily back. So we have the Roses and Lily back and the Crackle back, which are the first two decks that came out and... Um, with their, you know, with their backs. But of course, these are both reproductions. I'm not fortunate enough to own one of the only five um, decks that exist based on this, based on this, this, you know, this deck. Um, I want to comment on both of their boxes. AG, I think this is, it says Urania or your, um, Uran Urania, you know. But I, I think that that's all, you know, A.J. Mueller. So, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. But anyway, I, I bought this deck. The box is real nice, sturdy, you know. When it came out, I, you know, I know a historic deck or a significant deck when it comes out, you know. And of all the incantations of Rider Waite Smith tarot decks that we have, the Radiant, the whatever, I, you know, um, and then how many times the yellow box has come out and, you know, it, it, it's just that uh, I know that, you know, sometimes the reproductions were starting to get a little on the sloppy side, you know. Um, and so I kind of felt, felt like, I, you know, when this was made available and I understood it to be a reproduction, a very close reproduction to the 1910, um, I was interested in, in purchasing it because I felt that it was the, the soonest to that deck, I, you know, the, the source of that deck that I could get my hands on because, you know, I, I, I like going to the source of things. That's how I roll, right? You know that with my other tarot decks. So I wanted to get something as close to the source of this deck as I could. And then um, 
I don't know when this came out. Um, this this deck that was made available simply by a person named. Where's the name? I'm not can't see so good. Art Restoration by C in London. Can you make that out on the bottom row? So in 20, okay, this came out in 2020. So it's a few years after this. Um, and from what I understand from the cards that are very helpful that came along with the, with the deck, it's called the 1909 Restoration. It's based on the very first deck that was printed, you know, by them. And these cards um, describe the process and that it was painstakingly done. Um, I mean, they, they, they minimally and conservatively cleaned the surface of the original cards to get at, you know, the, the cleanest version of a uh, first stack that they could get their, you know, get their hands on. I think, you know, it's possible that maybe the colors had been restored to some degree, but... Um, or maybe it was just made consistent throughout, you know, maybe a part of it was damaged or something. So they would like maybe do it that way. I don't think there was a whole lot, though. I think it was pretty much, um, if you can see it here, it seems like it was pretty much an authentic uh, reproduction. And um, so when I found out about it, you know, again... You know, it's not too long ago, but a long, you know, before later than 2020. Um, when I found out about it, I thought, you know, I, I would really like to have that deck too. So I have like two historic, you know, Rider Waite Smith decks. You know, At any rate, um, I thought it would be interesting to put them side by side to see how they go. And now <clears throat> there's differences in, <coughs> excuse me, there's differences in. Um, the printing because they were done by different places and stuff like that but I just just see you know how close the first two are are similar to one another so in the 1910 we see that the the sky is a little more um saturated you know it's it's a, a deeper gray than the one on the on the left the 1909 um i think the image is crisper in the 1910 AE weight, a little. Now bear in mind though, the unfortunate thing about the um, one that was done in 2016, and in no matter what language it was written in, they didn't use a panel Coleman Smith's lettering. So whether you got it in English, French, or German, or whatever else they put it out in, you just, there was just, um, it, it was just not gonna be her hand, which is unfortunate. So this one does have that. The paper stock for both is different. I think the 1910 is a lot more flexible. This is less flexible, but I, you know, I don't tend to abuse my cards. And I, you know, I, I, um, I looked, you know, for the co these this common. I know people have done comparisons with this and something else and this deck and something else, but I, I couldn't find one where anybody actually did a comparison of these two, the 1909 and the 1910. So, so the blue is a little brighter here and we can see like there's texture to the sky. I don't know if my camera's picking it up, but there's like a texture to the sky. And here it's more of a, definitely a flat. The colors are pretty, pretty close. This might be a little brighter, you know, as the blue is brighter. Um, and I, and I guess let's compare this line work in both. I think the one on the right, the line work is cleaner. So I don't know how much of, uh, you know, restoration took place in, in sharpening the lines in this, in this version. I don't know if this would necessarily be a facsimile, you know, or if they did something to manipulate line and color to make it, um, you know, they, they, they wanted to make those changes. Um, and, uh, 
from what I read, you know, the reason for doing a a redo the following year was because they weren't satisfied with the color of the first. But I don't see like it's not like we're looking at the difference between, you know, you know, this version or, you know, the a banner weight smith, you know, um version. You know what I mean? So you know, and in in this case, the blue is is brighter. Where in, in this deck, it usually is, but it's not even blue here. It's like a gray. But that's really it. Again, the sky has texture, and I, I don't know if you can see that, you know, but it's not a flat matte color as it is, you know, as the, as the background colors are in this in this version. So I guess we don't have to go through every card. I don't know how many of you, well, some of you may really want to see it. So what's the point in doing a comparison if I don't really show it? Um, this one, the line is clearer. So maybe they correct it line as well as color, you know. Or they just got a better, a, you know, machine to do a better job, you know. Oh, I got something out of order there. So this blue is is more... If this blue green is more you know enthusiastic you know this one's a little washed out but again this is more i think of a facsimile so it was actually the colors you know by virtue of being over 100 years old could just have faded you know and maybe this one is what it should have been you know oh what am i doing so what happened here oh my bad So you see the foliage is quite different. It's like blue and here they made a green, but I don't know. I kind of like the blue foliage. I don't know. It's kind of sharp. <laughs> so the yellow one, I don't know. They're both nice, bright colors. Um, it also seems that the base color of this this printing is beige, you know, or a cream colored. And I don't, you know, this is stark white, so I don't know, you know, I, again, I don't know if the stark whiteness is really how much of that was from the original, you know, and, and, and what was from them trying to clean it up, you know, and make it... Um, you know, more, you know, more modern edges and stuff, but... um. I like them both, you know, I like them. I like them both. But I like being close to the source of, you know, in, in tarot, you know, so um, these two, I mean, I probably have, I bet you I have about 80 tarot decks of, you know, Rider Waite Smith, maybe more, maybe more like a hundred that are, you know, Rider Waite Smith versions or clones or, you know, in the style of, you know, kind of decks. So it's not like I don't have any, you know, but uh, I don't know. I just felt like I, if I can have, you know, my hands on copies of decks, you know, closest to the source, I, I would want them, you know, especially for, you know, a significant deck like, um, a, you know, a Rider Waite Smith deck. So the the original deck or the the um, older, you know, the nineteen oh nine restored. It's uh, it's softer. You know, it's um, the you know the colors seem softer. The line work is a little crisper in the nineteen oh nineteen ten. But they're both nice, you know.
Okay, in the suit of swords in the 1909 restoration, we see that there's some, you know, dirt, you know, that was on the original cards that for whatever reason, maybe that was the best that they could get it out, you know, without damaging the card. So I think that's kind of interesting. So it does show you that it's a, a pretty close, you know, it is a, a facsimile deck. So let me speed through it a little, a little bit. I think, you know, the purist in me wants to keep going, but um, <laughs> this video will be like three hours long at this rate. But maybe, maybe I should just pick it up and stop talking. <laughs> And I, I, I know both of these decks are readily available. I mean, they're not hard to get your hands on them. Um, I, I, I mean, I bought them fairly recently. I, you know, I, I, I don't think there's any difficulty in getting getting them. In fact, I've seen the one um, by A. G. Mueller <clears> or <throat> Urania in English, you know, what, that I couldn't get, you know, back in 2016. So it's definitely readily available. It's nice to see uh, Miss Coleman Smith's, you know, writing, you know, too. Because I think, you know, in a lot of them, you know, they did clean up the lettering or they just made it crisper or something, you know, maybe it was less hard for them to, to, uh, do the printing so it's kind of you know it's kind of nice to have a deck where it's really her unadulterated <laughs> handwriting or printing see I can't help myself think twice I said I'm going to go ahead <laughs> and I'm, I'm still just flipping them so I just want to see them myself too you know every now and then to revisit revisit the cards you know um because I, I haven't revisited them too often and, and uh, when I did that recent video about Nightmare Alley and I was looking at the you know Wait Coleman Smith deck I was thinking I should really pull out those cards and revisit them. I don't have anything against it. I think people think I maybe, I hate, you know, Ryder Waite Smith and the Waite Smith, you know, but um, I don't, I just, I, I first, you know, became obsessed with tarot at 10 and I had the one JJ Swiss in my head as the quintessential deck of tarot cards to have. And um, because I saw it as a kid and, uh, 1968 and it left a big impression on me and I it fixated in my brain until I was a teenager and you know going out you know to buy myself records or whatever and I came upon the one JJ Swiss tarot deck in like a Spain's or Spencer's novelty shop and I was like whoa I am meant to have this because I had fixated on it as a, as a little girl, you know, so I bought that deck. And so, you know, whenever I would buy new tech, that I that's how I taught myself. I taught myself on that deck because there wasn't a lot out there at this time, you know, um, there really wasn't, there, there wasn't a whole lot out there. And then when I ever would go in a book section and I would look to see if there were any decks nine times out of 10, they were, you know, not like mine. But every now and then I could grab one that looked like mine. So I, I began a collection of Pip style tarot decks because I wanted to have more than one because, you know, I wanted to, um, I just wanted to have a few. I went on a, a little variety. So that's how I got fixated on, um, you know, you know that, and I just love to use Pip style cards, you know, but I, it's not that I hate these guys, you know, I mean, um, <laughs> I just, you know, don't tend to use them. You know, I just prefer reading from the other style.
So let's skip a few. Okay. Now this guy looks a little textured here too. Maybe I wasn't noticing it in the other cards as prominently as I notice it here. <laughs> and I'm also looking at them through a camera lens, so I'm not really seeing it as you are. I'm sure you're seeing it better than I. And, you know, if you saw my other video the other day where I was comparing how using two different decks, you know, like a TDM and then a Rider Waite Smith deck, um, by put, you know, if you pull the same cards, would you get a different, if you, if you would pull the same cards from those two different kinds of decks, would you get the same or, you know, very similar, quite different reading? And I've had them where they would be both, you know, extremely similar, somewhat similar, um, and really different. Um, but for the most part, I think they have more in common than they don't <clears throat> as far as, uh, because the, the occultists, you know, I mean, Atea even admitted, you know, that he learned the craft of cardamancy from Italians, which it stands to reason would have been a longstanding tradition in Italy since it began there, you know. So, you know, the information, you know, it's not like it's a us or them kind of thing because the um, information was already out there, you know. And uh, I'm sure the cardamus, you know, took what they could from reliable sources that they knew. And um, so it's not as though they are, don't have very similar understanding you know, and I, I don't get at all involved with like signs of the Zodiac or, you know, Hebrew um, notations, although I don't think this deck um, has any uh, Hebrew notations, you know, but it has, um, uh, you know, I, I think some astrological references and I don't even get involved with understanding that because I'm not an astrologist, you know, I'm a tarot reader. <laughs> And, you know, how I learned and understood tarot to be, you know, what do you have? You have images on paper, right, that represent a source, a story source. They represent a singular truth. And then you have cards with numbers and suits, right? So really what you have there is numbers and suits, right? So, you know, it's it becomes a, a method essentially what I did was, you know, I, I essentially created a method of myself for myself for making associations with suits and what they meant, because I knew the four elements were key, right? You know, I knew that much. I mean, I didn't have a lot of um, things at my fingertips in, you know, mid-70s Philadelphia suburban bookstore in the mall, you know, <laughs> but, um, you know, I started to pick up on stuff. And, you know, that's kind of how I just taught myself how to read tarot. I reconciled number and suit and I um, tried to research the origin stories as much as I could of the, the higher order cards, the triumph cards or the trump cards, you know. And, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, Wait, Coleman Smith or... Um, some version of TDM or the Italian, uh, you know, you, you still got the same cast of characters, <laughs> you know, you, you still have the, um, you, know, you still have the same tw 22 cars, um, that represent something in history and you still have suits. The difference is that in the Rider Waite Smith, you know, they, they painted the meanings, pretty much right on the cards. I mean, there's, I always thought it was funny when people go, oh, I'm trying to learn it. It's like, what is there to learn? It's, the pictures are right there, you know? Okay, true. Maybe it's helped. It's helpful to know the, the origin stories, but I don't even think that's what they mean when they say, um, you know, what they, when they say, you just have to 
look at the cards and, and know some of these stories, you know, maybe. I mean, that's how I teach. I think it's real important to know the source of the story because, again, I like going to the source, you know. But uh, anyway, I'm probably talking too much. I'm a little chatty today. <laughs> but we're almost over, and I did it in under a half an hour. So maybe this wasn't too bad. I just put um, whatever order this card, this deck was in. I never changed it. I just kept it in its, you know, original. I never used it, so I kept it in its original. Um, so I put this deck in line with how this one came. And I think there was like a little strangeness about the way it was ordered. But um, anyway, I would wholeheartedly endorse, I, you know, either of these decks if you can still get your hands on it. Um, by sea in London. I think the package itself came from like um, Kansas, you know, some, you know, someplace. So I was thinking originally that I was buying these over overseas, you know, thinking it was like sea London, meaning somebody in London. <laughs> but uh, I think that's the person's name, duh. So how dumb am I? And so it had, you know, but it is based on a, you know, you know, a fast, you know, it is a fast simile of a original deck from 1909 because this is written in German <laughs> the information on this deck is written in German you know unfortunately I don't have the details about whether or not this was a, a true facsimile which it couldn't have been because of the letters but uh, you know you know a, I, I get the impression that it was as close to a facsimile as it could be with getting a, a fresh coat of paint you know that kind of thing but I, I could be wrong but that's just my impression. And I want to mention, too, um, this box, even though it's a, um, it's not a substantial box, you know, it's a kind of flimsy box. But I've never had a deck that opened lengthwise before. Maybe that's common in Europe or, you know, but I, I've never been familiar with it. And although the deck, there's a little room. It's a little roomier. The box is a little roomier than it than the deck is. But I, I like how they designed this because the way it's it's a nice box design, even though it's maybe flimsy. Um, can you see that? There's a piece that folds in. So it gives like bounce, you know, it gives bounce to the deck. So it doesn't really knock around that much um, when it's in the box. So those are my impressions and I hope it was interesting for you guys as well. Peace and stay well.